Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. Now, this is an example of how to create mood with lighting and effects in a picture. The combination of coloured gels and a smoke machine is a very effective way to produce a narrative within an image. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, so, to start with the subject, I've got uh, this table, which is uh, just an old palette, really. Uh, just gives a, a nice texture, I think, to the, uh, to the finished picture. Uh, the main subject is this abacus, and I've just surrounded it with a few bits and pieces to make it look a little more interesting. Then at the front here I have my tripod, uh, which has a geared column and a geared head uh, to give me fine control over the camera. And talking of which, I'm using this digital SLR uh, with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. The camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results. OK, so I'm just going to place this on the top of the tripod, like that. Right, now previously I've already lined this up. Um, so that I know uh, it's in more or less the right position. But what I haven't done is checked to see just what contamination I'm going to get from the house lights. It's a very important thing to do, uh, because if you don't do that, uh, you can get colour casts and all sorts of uh, things uh, that you don't really want if you don't know just what light is coming in from the house lights. OK, so to start with then, what I'll do is turn the camera on. There we are, and the software has recognised the camera. And just up here, you can see the settings which are on the camera at the moment. So it's a 50th of a second for the shutter speed, uh, 2.8 for the aperture at 100 ISO. So if I just grab an image with those settings, you can see that just with the house lights, we're producing a reasonable image. Now, this is not what we want. So in order to cut out the ambient light in the room, what I'm going to do is increase the shutter speed right up to the flash sync speed for that camera, which is 1 250th of a second. I'm also going to increase the aperture from 2.8 uh, to a more reasonable for this subject f16. This will give me a large depth of field, but it will also help cut out the effect of the house lights. So let's grab another image. There. Now with those settings, you can see there is no image to speak of. And that is exactly what we want. OK, so with that exercise now complete, uh, we need to add some light of our own. And I'm going to start by putting a flash head uh, above the subject, about here somewhere. So this is what I'm going to be using for my main light. Uh, this is a Profoto B1X, uh, which I've put on this stand uh, so that I can get it up above the subject. So I need it quite high, probably up here somewhere. Uh, and I'm using quite a robust stand for this uh, because obviously this is going to be a little unstable. Uh, so what I'm going to do is place it in position and then put a sandbag uh, on the base. Uh, C-stands are very useful for being able to do that with. OK, let's just pop this in here. So you should be able to see that this is uh, more or less uh, above the subject, uh, probably slightly in front of it, and about there should do us, I think. I'm going to keep this relatively close uh, to the uh, to the subject. Uh, I might just take it up ever so slightly, actually. There we go. Like that. And, of course, I'll just put a sandbag on that leg just to make it a bit more stable. There we go. Right. So with that in something like position, I'll turn the flash sync trigger on, like so. 
and we'll just go for a test image. Right, so you can see from this image uh, that we've actually got the exposure about right, um, purely by chance. Now the B1X is a 500 joule uh, flash head, which means that at energy level 10, you would get 500 joules from the head. I've set the energy level to about half range, which is an energy level of 5. OK, so that's our main light in place, and it's about the right exposure. So as I mentioned before, this is about half energy level, so that's uh, an energy level of 5, which equates to about 16 joules. Uh, so you don't need a great deal of energy at all for this. This could easily be done with a small flash gun. Right, so the next thing to do would be to set up uh, some of the accent lights, some of the lights which will give uh, a bit more of a mood uh, to the subject. So what I'm going to do is place uh, one light either side. So I'm going to place one around here somewhere. Then I'm going to place another one about here somewhere. Uh, and then finally I'll put another one round the back, down here. Uh, the idea of those is that uh, they will just catch the sides of the, uh, the subject here and just add a little interest, uh, especially uh, when we, that is combined with a smoke machine, which we'll do a bit later. So, for the first of those lights then, I'm going to put a, uh, another head, this time it will be a D2, about here with a yellow filter on it. Here we are, so I'm just going to place this around here somewhere. Now the idea that I'm looking for is to uh, get a flare in the lens of the camera, but I don't want the actual light to be in the, uh, the image. So I'll just check that in the viewfinder. And yes, I've got the light in the, uh, the picture. So I just want to move this round until it's just out of view. There, that should do it. Now, in order to check the effect, what I'm going to do is turn off uh, this head uh, and turn on that one. Turn that off like that, and let's give that a try. Uh, so this should now just fire on its own. Yes, there we go. So we're catching the table down here, which is what I want. But overall, I think it's possibly a little too far under. So I'm just going to take that up. Uh, by one energy level, uh, one stop, and I'm actually just going to turn it ever so slightly further round, which may increase the flare. So I'll do that, and while I'm here, I may as well just turn that up like so. We'll grab that again. There, that's better. So I wanted this flare here because I think that will add to the picture. Uh, and overall, yeah, I think that's working quite well. Right, time for the next one. So here we are. This is going to be uh, the uh, blue one for this side. Uh, again, just pointing at the subject. Uh, arbitrary energy level again. So we'll just give that a try and see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see in this image, we are getting a slight effect from it, um, but not enough. So I'm just going to increase the uh, energy level by two stops on this light. Like that. And we'll grab that again. There we are, that's better, that's brought it up a bit. And you can see that you've just got this accent on the side of the... Uh, subjects here. So this is what we had before and this is what we've got now. Right, so finally just place the last light which is another D2, this time with a green filter on it. Just take this around the back and just place this about here. Now what I'm trying to do is put this in such a position that you can't actually see the light 
from the camera's point of view. So I'll just check that in the viewfinder. Yeah, I think that's fine. So with that on, what I'll do now is just grab an image. OK, and we can see the effect that is having, uh, especially on this feather at the top here. Um, but don't forget, once the main light is turned back on again, a lot of this will disappear. The effect that I'm going for with the green light at the back is to illuminate the smoke uh, from the smoke machine, not necessarily illuminating the subject here. So if I just turn the uh, main light at the top here back on again, so I'll just select that and just turn that on, like so, and now fire them all together. There we are, that's the sort of thing uh, that I wanted. Uh, you can see that the feather has now gone back to being white, more or less. You've still got a little accent here and there, which just adds to the, uh, the mood of the picture, I think. So now it's just time for the smoke machine. So here I have uh, my smoke machine on this stand. Just place that about here somewhere. And again, I'm trying to get this into a position where I can't see it uh, from the camera. So I'll just check that. Yeah, more or less there, I think. What I'm going to do is just use this piece of cloth just to cover up the clamps and things to make it a little less obvious. I don't think we'll see it, uh, but we'll just grab an image uh, and just see if we can see it in the image. No, nope, we can't see it at all. It would be around here somewhere if you could see it. Right, so all we need to do now is just wait for the uh, smoke machine to warm up uh, and then we'll give it all a bit of a try. OK, now the smoke machine has warmed up, so I'll make some smoke and then grab a few images and we'll see what we get. Just let the smoke settle out a little. OK. So if I just go back through the ones we've just captured, and we'll just have a little look and uh, see if this is about right from an energy point of view from the flashes. I think it's OK. They look all right to me. That's uh, quite a nice one. Right. So now it's just a case of um, repeat until you're happy with the result. So once again, we'll add some smoke and capture some images. There we go. I think we've got some, uh, some quite good ones there. So all that remains now is to uh, go through the images, select the best one, and go to Photoshop to do the minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop, and I've loaded up the selected images. Uh, so just reviewing these, uh, we have this one. Uh, there is a little smoke in the background. Uh, it's got uh, a bit of highlight in it. It's not bad. Uh, this one I particularly like. Uh, we've got some nice swirls of smoke going on in here. Uh, and then we have this, which is another variation, uh, a bit more swirly, uh, and so on. So of all those, I think I'm going to go forward uh, with this one. So what I'm going to do is just copy that as a new file. So I'll just click on the icon over here, ask for a duplicate, want a new document, uh, and I'm going to call it um, Abacus. Click on OK. Uh, and then that has made me this new file at the top. Uh, so I can dispense with all the others, like so. Right. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a, uh, a copy, but this time I'll keep it within this uh, document, like so. So that's just made me a copy uh, on a new layer. And one of the first things I'm going to do here is introduce a bit more distortion. Uh, when this was captured, I captured it uh, with a 24mm lens uh, on purpose so that I end up with um, slightly distorted edges. Uh, so what I actually want to do is make it a bit more distorted. So what I'm going to do is go to Filter and come down to Liquify. There we go. Uh, and now with quite a large uh, brush, what I'm going to do is just pull the corners out a little bit. So from here somewhere, I'll just take that and just pull that down. And let's pull the other corner as well, like so. Just pull the top there. There we are, I want to bend the book, like so. So I've got a bend now in the uh, abacus itself, which is what I want, like that. Yes, that's OK. Let's click on OK. Yeah, I think that's worked quite well. Um, and really, I don't think there's very much more that I want to do with it. Um, I'll have a look at a crop. Uh, now I'm going to pick uh, 16 by 9, because this is going to be destined for the video. Uh, and really, that's uh, pretty good as it is. I might just move the whole thing up a little. I don't want to go too far, because I want to keep the feather in. Yeah, I think that's all right as it is. So I'm just going to click on OK. And there we have it. With the bare minimum of Photoshop manipulation, this is more or less as it was captured in camera. We've ended up with an image which is uh, full of mood, has a bit of a narrative going on, a bit impressionistic. Uh, I think that's ended up with a very nice still life study. OK, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that picture. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.